She's arranged to meet historian Dr. Dan Jackson at the North Shields Registry Office to find out more about John and Caroline. Okay, Cheryl, so if you look out this window here, you get a really good sense of the geography of North Shields. That's amazing. I got a copy of a, a photograph of my great, 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 great grandparents. Fantastic. Uh, John Wood and Caroline. And he was a mariner. He was a mariner, yeah. yeah. Mariners were known to be really snappy dressers. That's what I yeah. said. He looks yeah. amazing. They had a lot of swagger about them. Yeah. That's what they were known for. And then I got this census from um, 1851. Mm -hmm. So they're living at um, Gibson's Bank, which is just there. Can you see where the greenery is? No way. That was the bank itself. And, but they lived on these stairs because the land, uh, as you can see, is quite a steep bank. So you had these precarious houses kind of clinging to the, to the river bank where all these people lived on top of one another. Wow. So this was known as the Low Town, and that's where the sort of working class people lived. This was the place where all the sort of spit and sawdust pubs would have been. Because you can imagine all these sailors coming into the town. Yeah, of course. And the sort of things that sailors like to spend their money on was all catered for down on the Low Road. So it was the sort of place you had to have your wits about you. Right. It was known to be quite a violent place at times. And up on the high ground was called the High Town. And that's where the posher houses were, where the big houses, where Dockray Square and Northumberland Square and places like that. So there's a very obvious difference between the class. different... Yeah, class yeah. divide in the town. So they would have lived in, like, a small house here? Yeah. Uh, it, there's a report from the time that says people in Gibson Stairs were living in about four to a room. Oh, um, wow. There's all sorts of industries. There's everything you can think of. Shipbuilding, sail-making, mast-making. Anchor smiths, you've got roperies where women used to work. So it was incredibly busy. When John and Caroline lived here, North Shields was a thriving port. The town's location at the mouth of the River Tyne meant easy access to the Northeast's coal fields, which were fueling Britain's industrial revolution. Coal was loaded onto ships and sent down the coast to London and also as far afield as the Baltic and North America. Sometimes when men were away at sea, they could be away for two or three years at a time. Two or three years? Yeah, depending on where they were going. So I guess the woman then had to be quite confident, tough, independent. If their men are away at sea for two, three years mm -hmm. and they're living in an environment like that, mm. do you have to be a tough woman? Absolutely. And the women of North Shields are known to look out for each other as well yeah. and to support each other. A useful place to go next would be to find out about his career at sea. Cheryl's meeting maritime historian, Dr. Helen Doe, at the nearby Old Low Lights Museum. So, so far what I do know is that he had an apprenticeship ticket and that he lived on the bank there in North Shields. Your ancestor, John, finished his apprenticeship and he then became a second mate which is actually quite a good step up right. on ships. And he's working in the coal trade. Well, this is the first document I've got for you. OK. Which tells you something about him. So this is a report of character, 1851. John Woodley, very good. Oh, wow, so on this page, he's the only one that has a very good for his conduct. Yes, indeed. James Lane. That's his brother. James Lane was seven years younger than Cheryl's four times great-grandfather, John, and had followed in his big brother's footsteps to sea. And what does that say? He's badly behaved? Yes. And it doesn't specify? Maybe he was drinking? Perhaps he was drunk. James Lane? Called me. A bloody snot? Yep. Yeah. Of what is it? And struck me. And struck me? In the face. Oh, wow. This is the mate, and he's saying, he struck me in the face, for which I put him in irons. Then, the next day, you've got James Lane again, but this time he's taken before the master, found guilty, and he's um, fined for the offence. It's a big contrast to his brother. Now, look at this. Certificate. He was a master, he became a master. Was he then like second or next to the captain? He is the captain. 
That's incredible. John became a master mariner in 1855 at the age of 29. By this time, the merchant service had introduced tough exams to ensure only the most qualified men became masters. John would have needed to be able to read and write, as well as navigate by the stars. 114 Churchway, North Shields. Yeah. That address shows that he's really come a long way. Churchway is up there, high town. Oh, wow. So he's now living See? in a more salubrious area. I feel really, really proud of him, actually. He's done so And he well. should be, yeah. yes. Got a better life for his wife and his children. Well, she's certainly uh, now got status as well. Really? Mm hmm Can we go back to your photograph a moment? Yeah, absolutely. We can have a look at that. So I wonder... In a slightly different light now. By now, he was already a master. It's quite possible that that was taken to celebrate this very big step. Wow. And no wonder they're looking so proud. Yeah. This is a photograph showing status. And that's probably why it was taken. Makes complete sense now. And the first ship that he became master of was called La Belle. Isn't that nice? And as, as captain, as, as the master of the ship, he is in charge of selecting the crew. And this is the crew that he had Not James. from Wales. Oh, God. James Lane. Oh, yes. He's got his brother. Dear. Oh, dear. Maybe he behaved her for his brother. Uh, James has been in trouble on the Spirit of the Deep. And you can see it shows here the, sh the last ship he was on was the Spirit of the Deep. So he obviously hasn't had any work in between. I'm actually not surprised that he recruited J um, his brother, James. Why is that? It's just typical, like, Geordie mentality to always keep your family involved. I mean, I'm, I'm sure any other master wouldn't have wanted James aboard, given his <laughs> previous... Given his background. Yeah. But, um... No, I guess that... I, I reckon that John could have kept James in check and he would have liked to give him another opportunity and chance to earn some money, I suppose, and that's very typical still now of the Geordie mentality. <laughs>